Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher. Welcome to the Sweetwater Minute. This week on the Sweetwater Minute, we are joined by Dave Roberts, product specialist for Motu. Dave, hello, Mitch. Thanks Pleasure for coming in. We go back a long ways. We actually met uh, mid uh, mid '90s, I think, at the AES show in, in New York. But you've been with Motu for even longer than that. I remember that. Yes, I've been with Motu for about 18 years now. It's a great company to work for. Wow, a lot of changes during those years. We've seen a lot of changes in technology, in the music industry, uh, in how people use computers to make music. It's been very exciting. Right, right. Now, the product we're talking about today is Digital Performer. I actually started using this when it was Performer version 1.4 way back uh, before it had audio capabilities. Then you added audio and made a Digital Performer. But today, we're talking about a really significant advance with DP8. Can you give us an idea of what we're looking at here? Sure. Performer was the first MIDI sequencer for the Macintosh platform, and it became Digital Performer later on. Uh, but this has been the premier MIDI sequencer on the Mac platform for a long time. Mm -hmm. And with DP8, this will be the first edition of the program that is both for Macintosh and Windows. Wow. Uh, DP8 is a major upgrade on a lot of, a lot of levels, mm -hmm. but the move to Windows is very significant. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's the beginning of a new era for, for Motu, working with a uh, DAW on the Windows platform. And you've actually got it running here. On uh, Tell us about what we have going on here. Well, this is a, an Asus computer. The, this is an $850 laptop. It's a 2.3 gigahertz machine, 8 gigabytes of RAM. Mm -hmm. DP8 is running on Windows uh, 7, both 32-bit and 64-bit. Okay. And it's the same program on Windows or Macintosh. Mm -hmm. So now you really have the choice. Now, this is going to be great for Macintosh users because the Windows subscription base will increase the development of the program, so Mac users benefit. But we expect to, to possibly double the subscription of the program by bringing it to the Windows platform. Right, right. And it's, it's led to some other changes as well. For example, um, because you're on the Windows platform now and on the Mac platform, you're now supporting VST plugins, correct? That's correct. VST is the one plugin standard that is open source and cross-platform. Mm -hmm. So DP8 supports VST plugins on both Mac and Windows, and that means that you have seamless file transition if you need to move your files between the two platforms. Nice. So if you're working with someone who's on the other platform, it's very easy to take your program, your uh, sorry, your audio files and your sessions back and forth. Yep. Uh, the direct transfer back and forth. Uh, DP8 is also a full 64-bit on both Mac and Windows. It'll mm -hmm. take advantage of all the RAM in your computer. So if you're running large amounts of virtual instruments. That's a big deal. Uh, we're supporting on the, the Mac platform, of course, uh, support for the latest 10.8. The Coco graphics engine is part of the Mac operating system. Right. And preliminary testing is showing us that uh, it, it's going to work on Windows 8 out of the box. Nice. So we'll, we'll stay on top of that compatibility. Right, right. One of the things I really like is if you are working cross-platform, the, the uh, user interface is virtually identical. I mean, you, as a Mac user myself, and having worked traditionally on a digital performer on the Mac, it looks very familiar to me on Windows. It, it's the same program on, on Mac or Windows. It is probably the most customizable user interface of all the DAWs out there. Mm -hmm. um, we've included the ability to change the, the skins of the program. We give you all these different preset themes. You can go in and make changes to that yourself. Uh, you can set the program up to be a single window interface, or you can break it out into multiple windows if you have multiple monitors. Very flexible user interface. Uh, and probably the easiest sequencer on the market to learn. Mm -hmm. You can customize all the key commands, so if you've learned to use another sequencer, you can set Digital Performer up to look and work like another piece of software so that right. you're instantly comfortable with it. Right, right, so it's very fast to get in and get up and working with. Very uh, fast. Now, of course, the, the move to Windows and VST support are, are major major enhancements in, in a DP8, but that's not all that's happened here. There's a lot of other new features as well, correct? Yeah, the, the move, move to Windows is a very obvious thing. Uh, other obvious things, 64-bit support on the Mac is, is mm -hmm. a big deal. But this is a, a, a big upgrade in a lot of levels. When, when we do a major upgrade, uh, there'll be things that are under the hood, you know, such as the Cocoa support. But there's also going to be a lot of cool stuff at, right at the, the surface of the program. So we've got, uh, I think, 18 new plugins mm -hmm. uh, that are included with DP8. Uh, a, a core user base of Digital Performer are people who do sound for picture. So we've rebuilt the video engine inside Digital Performer. Sample okay. accurate timing of the audio inside the movie compared to the rest of your sequence. The ability to put that movie onto a full screen uh, on the computer screen or to send it out to an external video interface. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, there's enhancements for sound for picture guys. Uh, I use Digital Performer live on stage for all my guitar processing. Mm -hmm. And in DP8, we've added in a, a physics model of the Vox AC30, the Mesa Boogie Pro Soloist. Uh, the, the Mark III dual rectifier. 
Uh, we've got electroharmonics plugins, MX, well, they're Motu plugins, but they're modeled <laughs> on the electroharmonics and MXR and DOD and some really fabulous vintage stuff. We've been doing a lot of uh, this physics modeling of vintage analog gear right. and, and putting that processing into DP. Right, yeah, you were, you were showing me some of the, uh, the Guitar FX plugins, the uh, analog delay and the analog flanges, two different types of, of uh, phasers, rather, and uh, the Dynacomp compressor and things. Man, they sound really authentic. They, they are the real thing. Uh, physics modeling is where you go and take the original piece of hardware and you basically take it apart electronically, figure out how it works, and then recreate that uh, with computer software. But the cool thing is that we're doing what used to be little stomp boxes that ran on 9-volt batteries and were very noisy. And we've gotten rid of the problems of the 9-volt battery and the high impedance and the noise. So now you have these wonderful effects that you can use for guitar. But you mentioned the Dynacomp compressor. That was sold right. as a sustain box for guitar. But it's actually quite an amazing compressor to put on a snare drum or, or a vocal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have other plugins as well. It's not just guitar effects. There's a, a, actually a spring, a spring reverb that I thought was really cool, the spring bob that does spring uh, three different, yep. uh, but also a, uh, a compressor, the multiband compressor. Well, uh, engineering type of, of processing. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, there's uh, something called a precision delay, which is used for alignment of phase-related audio signals. So if you've got two microphones on a guitar cabinet, uh, it used to be you'd have to sit there and move the microphone to get the phase just right. Now we've got a plug-in that will do that for you and will automatically line up the phase. We've got something called a dynamic equalizer, which is a, a five-band parametric EQ, and each of those bands has its own compressor. Right. Uh, our DSer works the same way. It's, it's a, a frequency-specific compressor, but it also has an EQ built in. So, mm -hmm. for example, I can uh, increase the, the treble of the signal, but then compress the sibilance so I get a brighter sound without a sibilance problem. Right. Uh, and there's a, a number of very cool plugins that we put in here. Not just the guitar stuff, but uh, right. some serious engineering plugins. Right. Lots of great things in there. Yeah. So when is Digital Performer 8 going to hit the market? Uh, in September. It'll be, nice. uh, you'll, you'll have it in stock. You'll be able to send it to your customers uh, before the end of this month. Very good. And uh, if you're already a DP user, how are upgrades going to work? Well, if you purchase Digital Performer 7 this year, it's a no-charge upgrade. We're nice. just going to give you a, a DP8. We announced a DP8 at the NAMM show in, in January, and so mm -hmm. anybody who bought a Digital Performer after that, DP8 is a free upgrade. Awesome. Awesome. I can't wait to get my hands on it and try out the new uh, plugins, check out the skins, run it on Windows. It's going to be great. Well, I'll tease you a little bit. I've been using DP8 live on stage for, for my own use uh, for uh, over a year now, and, and mm -hmm. the new effects plugins are great. The 64 bit support is awesome. There's a solid feel to the program now. That it will just take advantage of all the RAM that you've got mm -hmm. uh, in your computer and, and a, you know, a new level of stability, especially in that live situation where it's really critical that everything just works. Right. And DP just works. Right. How exciting. Thanks for coming by, Dave. Really appreciate it. Mitch, thank you very much. Good to see you. Cheers. I'm Mitch Gallagher. Thanks for joining me for the Sweetwater Minute.